Ever found yourself going down that aisle in the grocery store and you see that mac and cheese in the blue box and you think, I can make some of that, you know, it's pretty easy. It's gonna be simple. Don't do it, folks. Stop right there. Don't do what you're doing. I'm gonna show you how to get some of these and that's gonna have the crunchiest outside you ever seen to them, but they're loaded with flavor. Green chilies, bacon and onion, but cream cheese is in there also. Come on, deep fried mac and cheese. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp, and yeah, we done moved back to my favorite place. I mean, and God has blessed us with a beautiful day here, and what are we talking about? Yeah, you heard me. This ain't your ordinary just mac and cheese. This is what you call the cowboy version of fried mac and cheese. I'm talking about it's going to be oh so good because we're going to mix what in there? Some bacon, some onion, some green chilies, but we're going to go all out on the cheese. Now, people, I know y'all know that I love the people in Wisconsin, and today we are sticking in a whole block this long of Velveeta and some cream cheese, because I want that extra smooth creaminess throughout. I want you to run down there to the grocery store. Run fast. Run fast as you can, because there's going to be a shortage of what? Elbow macaroni. And I want you to get the large. Don't get the little bitty stuff. Get the large. You need at least eight ounces so bring home one of the big packs because you're going to be wanting to make a whole bunch of this stuff i double the recipe all the time because it's going to make 16 or 20 of them and mm, they are so good just set it aside but while you're at that store did you go buy the meat aisle you needed to yeah remember what i told you it ain't your regular macaroni and cheese I need you to buy some thick cut sliced bacon take five or six big old slices of that and i want you to slice it down the middle and then i want you to come back and dice it because we need it in sort of little bitty pieces to where it's going to blend in so well. You see me take that Stargazer skillet and put it over on the burner. And speaking of Stargazer, hey, them folks, they got good stuff and we really like them. And we use it a lot. But they also won an award from Popular Mechanic Magazine for having one of the best skillets out there. Yay, shout out to Stargazer. So they are good people. And folks, we'll have you a link to where you can find some more out about that stuff. Because we did a review on them. Now, as that bacon begins to cook, maybe four to five minutes, and you want to let it get pretty crispy, and then right there at the end, I want you to take a half of a white onion that is diced up and put in there because I don't want to burn that onion as we're cooking it along. We just want to see them onions get a little golden brown color to them and get pretty soft. Pull them out of that stargazer, let them drain their well on a paper towel, and let's get to talking about that mac and cheese. Now, you've seen me find me a little old sauce pot, red speckled enamel where it was, uh-huh. Put me some water in it, and then I dumped me about two cups of that elbow macaroni in there and a little bit of avocado oil, so don't nobody be sticking together. Give it a little stir, and I want you to cook it till the guy rode through the hailstorm and got his pickup all beat up. Who was it, Shen? Al Dente. Yes, he did. So, because you don't, we're going to have to cook this again. So, just cook it to where it's just barely got soft. Turn the burner out, bring it over, drain it. And let's go to work. And y'all have seen me use this piece of equipment I call the Martian helmet. Just let her drain. Don't, oh, don't do this in the house, okay? But out here, you can just drain it right in the kitchen floor. Watch that bee gets a little hot. Make sure you get all the water off of it. Turn the heat to low if you got such a setting. Put your skeddies back in there, and we done forgot some. To that, folks, I need you to go ahead and add that four tablespoons of butter. And remember I was talking about this cheesy goodness? Velveeta, to me, makes stuff as creamy good macaroni cheese as you can find anywhere. So just cube it up any way you can get it in there because we got to stir it here in a minute. We do. Then I want you to take four ounces of cream cheese. Yeah. And then we need to go to stirring so we can get some of that cheese to melt. Well, folks, things is beginning to sizzle right along we are. And look here half and half you can use heavy cream but i sort of like to use half and half in this i usually start with about a fourth of a cup and mix it around there it'll help that cheese and everything get in there and get everything melted and goodness well at this time while we're in the stirring mood i'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in we have a video that comes out every wednesday at 2 30 central time New viewer, old viewer, hey, we welcome you all and we love you and thank you for being part of our YouTube family. And out here in the crowd, how many of you was here last week and watched the steak, vendor, steak finger video? Oh, thank y'all so much. They're bashful. They done hid, Shan. You didn't see them. Some of them run plumb over the hill. They're so scared. So we're going to go with that. So you can see things have beginning to cream up here. At this time, folks, two cans 
of hatch chilies diced. Don't leave them out, we gotta have them. But I like to drain them. So get them mixed in there. And guess what? We can't forget about the hog meat and the onion. Go ahead and put it in there. Now I know a lot of you are gonna have a lot of trouble trying to get enough self-control not to eat this before we're finished. And I'll tell you folks, it is one of them dishes that when you get finished, you think, why didn't I made this all my life? This is what I want. Mm. I mean, it is good. We have made them so many times now, it has become one of our favorites. Now, when you got everything blended in there, as we do, and y'all watch this fire while I do a quick motion. That was sort of, sort of like Pony Express. We have found out that macaroni and cheese does love some of our original seasoning, and the only place you're gonna find it is at www.kentrollins.com. Mm. Folks, I know you gotta have a lot of willpower not to just go ahead and don't eat that. Now, I mean, you could, but then you'd miss out on one of the greatest accomplishments ever, and that are we talking about? Fried mac and cheese balls. So good, so crispy, so take that, put it in something, and put it in the ice box for at least three hours. Yeah. Let it come to room temperature first and then put it in there, let it set three hours. Don't bother it, don't touch it, keep the kids out of it, the beagle, whatever kind of dog you got because they're going to be wanting it. Do not bother it. It's got to set up. That's what makes this deal so interesting to me. Now, we're going to have some panko breadcrumbs here. I done dumped a whole box in there. What are these called, Shin? Cackleberries, rooster bullets, hen fruit. You got it. Now, just go ahead in there because we need to make an egg wash. Big. Watch them for me, would you? Make sure the possums don't get them. And you're supposed to whisk them up. But hey, have you ever been somewhere and you didn't have a whisk? I got one, but I'm gonna show you this little deal here. So we're gonna do the shake and bake method. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, 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 shake and bake. And guess what we have? Egg wash. Mm-hmm. So egg wash, panko, macaroni and cheese. We got our good fine eggs over here getting us some old hot and we need to run about 350 degrees. Now, I like to use an ice cream scooper and just scoop in there, and they'll be about like that. Shan likes them a little smaller, so we're just going to use this regular old tablespoon. But look here, what done happened. Oh, man, folks. I would tell you, this is sort of messy. So if you got some of them things, get them on because you finna make a mess. And I'll give you another hint, too. If you really want to try to keep this a little cleaner than what it is, get you one of them big old flat cookie sheets and lay them right here where you're at. But seeing as we're out here in Mother Nature's kitchen, all them crumbs will hit the floor out there and be good to go because the possum will come by at night and clean things up. And just roll it up in a little old ball. And folks, really about that size is about perfect because we want them to cook all the way through. So put them in the egg wash over here in the panko. And I need you to squeeze them really good while you got them over here to make sure that all that panko is sticking on there. And then you can just set the first contestant right there and go on till the grease gets hot. Well, didn't take long to get all that done, and folks, let me tell you, it is one of the most amazing creations you will have, have in your life. When you put one of them in there and give it a crunch, mm, it is so good. But remember, you got to use that panko, and when you see me dip it in that egg wash, be sure you mash them around there pretty good to make sure you can get all that panko you can on there to stick to it, because that's what gives it this crust. Because that is what we're talking about. But hey, get them out of that hot grease, let them drain on a wire rack, put a paper towel under it, and then just put them over in a bowl and pass them out and let them go. It is so good. I did pick the onions and the piece out of these two because I had some really good help today. This fella had been helping me and Shan for probably, 
11 years. And a lot of y'all prayed for him when he had a bad leg. Big, I want to thank you. You got more fans than I do. You, you just show up when it's time to eat, don't you, buddy? Good job. So now that they've got theirs. I want to hear the crunch. I think I need to have mine. But look at that cheesy goodness, the bacon, the green chili, the onion gives it a lot of flavor. But that crust, folks, mm. y'all don't give me some room, Duger, because we finna do the cheese, slide it on over and get some of that crunch. It's so good. I know that it would. Mm. Now, I didn't fry all them, because it'll make about 20, 25. But this right here will founder you up so bad you'll feel like a dead carp laying out in the sunshine. You'll just be like, oh my gosh, I done eat too much. It is pure goodness. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed because me and the big and Shannon Duke, we sure did. And it's so easy. Get everybody in there, get you to help and get you assembly line, pass them out. Hey, you'll be wanting to fast food fry them, put them in the freezer and send them down the road. But don't forget, recipes listed down there below. And we thank you so much for watching. As always... I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans and everyone that's keeping us safe in this country. And we salute old glory, we do. So remember folks, it's all about being a good neighbor. We ask you to share the videos, share the food, pass it around to everybody. And remember, you should never look down on someone unless you're offering them a hand to pull them up. And give them one of them fried cheese mac balls too if you want to. Or is it mac and cheese? Which is it? I don't know, but it's always good. God bless you, everyone, and I'll see you down the mac and cheese trail. Andy, I have the clicker. Click, click. Why do they call it elbow? Fried, crispy. But I messed up. <laughs> I don't know why they don't call it you macaroni, because some of it look like a you. And just cube it up. Uh-oh, big. That one hit culinary. He said, you keep dropping it, Dad, I'll keep cleaning it up. Oh, it melted. It's, it it's a no longer. <laughs>